<laughs> but they go silent because they're going to go silent. I don't quite understand why people use that probate language, like like that dead, like when someone's died type of language for wills. Like, why didn't we just say we're the... Why didn't we just say... I don't know. I, I don't understand that because, like, the executor comes from probate, doesn't it? Yeah, it's 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 a dealing with death. All that all that language is dealing with death. I know. So, I, I, you know, because I, I I understand like a trust is a dead 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 entity, but it's a dead entity in the sense that it was never alive, not in the sense that it was once alive and now it's dead. So trust I are actually looked at slightly different. Is where trusts are looked at because a trust has to be renewed every twenty years. All right. Unlike a corporation, which can go on for like a hundred years and be fine and no one touch it. So a trust has to live on. And so I don't think a trust, if I remember correctly, after I go in, we go into the other trust, we on the other trust videos. Um, I don't think a trust is looked at as being a dead entity. It's another entity, but I don't think it's a dead entity like a corporation. But don't quote me on that yet. I have to go back and look at my yeah. notes. Okay, anyway. So, yeah, cool. Um, all right. Well, I, I, I think I asked you kind of loads of questions and I took you off track from what your notes were. So is there anything on your notes that you... my notes yet. It was a very detailed. Yeah. Is, is there anything on your notes that you want to kind of get back onto? Any points that we haven't really... Any of the fundamentals? You know, it, it, since we're, this is more of a, a, an introductory before we get into the other ones to get a little bit deeper. Now, let's look at the basic... Let's cover the basic elements of a trust. So you have the three positions, the grantor, the trustee, and the beneficiary. Mm. The grantor usually is the person putting something into a trust. They initiate the trust. Mm. They bring the res, which is the money or knowledge. or It doesn't, have to, it doesn't always have to be something tangible. It can be intangible. So um, maybe family history. I don't know. Whatever you want it to be, as long as you put that in a trust and it can be managed, then right. you, have, you can create it. Like, a, a trust that most people don't realize is a trust is a museum. A All museum right. is a trust. The benefit is the public to see the view, the items, which is the rest that's in that museum. Yeah, and yeah. the museum curators are the trustees. Right. And then usually someone started the museum, and then you have a, um, that executors, got to be thinking executors. Exchangers are other people who add to the trust that aren't the, trust, that aren't the grantor. Oh. So anyone who's putting something into a trust is called an exchanger. Oh, I see. So, so those you know, archaeologists or anything else, they put it into that museum, so they keep adding to the res, creating oh, you know, wow. more and more of a bigger trust. I've also heard another phrase, settler. What does that mean? A set, it all depends on what type of trust you're talking about. Because a settler would be, because you say trust store and settler, well, who's putting something into the trust? That would be the settler. Oh, right. And a trust store could just be someone else having to set it up. I got to look that one up too again. But okay. So. I was looking at that the other day. It's a settler is someone who's putting something into the trust. So you have a lot of terms that are being inter used around interchangeably. But when they say certain terms, they're, they're, they're referring to very particular types of trust. Yeah. So, you know, a grantor and a settler, it, depending on what kind of trust you're talking about, are the same thing. Or it starts to identify the type of trust very quickly that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like when you say... um. Ex executor that's starting to hone in on a very particular type of trust and each trust comes with its own set of rules mm. that's why it's been that's why these names have come from they didn't say well i'm not the trustee he's the executor or the grantor or whatever mm. so it's letting me know that that's a particular type of trust they're talking about or a particular type of agreement and that's why they have a very specific vocabulary hmm. that's mean shit. I, i've heard people say I've heard people really slag off the commerce gurus and say, you know, those commerce gurus are wrong. It's not about creditor debtor. It's all about trust. They got it wrong. What do you have? What's your comment on that? Well, if they got it so wrong, why are they getting success? Depending on which guru you're talking about. <laughs> so anyone who's talking about, oh, this is the way it is. Well, how do you know? Because <laughs> ultimately, everyone is speculating to a degree. Because unless you're in the Illuminati or whoever to set it up and you have that master plan in front of you, you don't have a clue what's going on and you can't prove anything. And just because you see an action on the surface does not mean that's what it is beneath. Yeah. yeah. So, no. So everyone, everyone, to me, everyone is speculating. Some people have very strong evidence pointing towards somewhere. But if your evidence was so true, why can this other guru do the same thing and get away with it? Yeah. So if you knew there should only be one way to do it then. Yeah. 
shouldn't be all these different ways we can go about approaching it. Because the whole thing is a sham. It's all BS anyway. And that's why you can just run your life. Don't let anyone run it for you. Let someone they will. <laughs> like, Actually, wrong, get out of here. <laughs> Dean Clifford made a good point about that. I think he referred to it as a black box. It's like, I think in programming language, that, that means you know the information that's going in. And then the, the, pro, the processes or the algorithms or the functions are secret. And then you see the result coming out. That's but, it. But you don't know what's going on. So it's kind of a bit like that, isn't it? With all this law stuff. We you know we can see what's going on we don't really know what what they're doing from their perspective we can see the results and we we kind of have to it's, it's like that isn't it we speculate what they might be doing or what might be going on from their perspective exactly yeah and so anyone's saying this is the way you don't know prove yeah. it yeah show and prove. that's what it comes down to show and prove yeah. and if you can't prove it and show this is what happens and you start speculating when you've got the input these are my actions and my conduct and the paperwork i put in yeah. and then it goes into this magical area right here <laughs> well prove what's going on right here break it down for us step by step yeah. and then show us all the way till it comes out yeah. and then show when i do it my way what happens and it goes in and tell me why it works yeah or why it doesn't work yeah and you can't do it it's just way too much you know i really don't give a damn if it works, if it goes into the box and it comes out the way I want, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't really care. And that, I'm not here to try to figure it all out. It, they put this stuff together. It's taken them centuries to put this stuff together to control everybody. How else do you can, how do you herd cats? <laughs> you know, Gordon says that, but it's, you cannot herd cats <laughs> unless you get the cat to believe that it's supposed to do a certain thing. Right. So if I train it, then off, oh, you got to, we got, that is completely genius. The way they got everyone controlled on this planet. Complete, like, you had to be thinking for centuries to put this together. You think <laughs> one person, your one lifetime, you're going to figure out what took them centuries and generations? No. Sorry <laughs> that you believe you're smarter than you really are. <laughs> but you found a way, though. A way, not the way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's in clear, like this and that. It's not this or that. It's not like it's one way of doing it and the other ways don't work. It's like, no, there's multiple ways of getting the result. Yeah, because everyone has these different perspectives. You have Winston, Gordon, Bill Thornton, Dean Clifford, but no one's, I haven't seen people reproduce his yet. So, yeah. you know, all these gurus out here, and, you know, Doc or Mr. Lou and whatever guy, those two guys that had that argument. <laughs> 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 that was <laughs> time if you listen to it. Um, you know, so everyone has different perspectives. <laughs> That was cringe. That was the most cringeworthy thing. I've, I'm really not a fan of that guy, David Clarence, at all. Yeah, that was. That was a waste of time. And, you know, if we if we broke down that, we go into all the fallacies and all the things he was talking about, just break his whole thing apart. It's pretty useless. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of power. I think it's a waste of my bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you have all these perspectives. So it was, if you can say someone's wrong, that means you're right. So you just made it into a black and white issue. So that means you should be able to show us damn near mathematically exactly why these things work and why they don't. Yeah. And you can't. I don't know anyone who can. They can come up with very compelling evidence, yeah. but it goes back into fallacies and all this thing. Because based on what? And that's yeah. only if believing that is true. So then you have to prove that's true, and you have to prove that's true. Yeah. And you can't prove it's true because once you go into the black box, you can't tell anything. Yeah, yeah. What's it's that judge like, thinking? What has he been trained? What's going on? You don't know. Yeah. It's like the black swan theory. Have you heard that? You can never uh, prove there's no black swan. Like, because you only have to discover one to, to disprove your statement that there's no like you can't say that all swans are white because you don't know kind of thing do you see what i mean yeah exactly because you don't know because there might be a black swan but you you don't know because so yeah it's like a lot it's a logical fallacy isn't it like you say is yeah and so that's why it was become important but you know just just find something that works yeah. not if it makes sense to you but if if it works and you can identify with it better yeah. then go for it yeah 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 yeah, that's what I always say to people, like, go with the stuff that feels right, that resonates with your kind of way of doing things. Because also, everybody's got different personality types. And, you know, like, the way that works for one person, like, some people enjoy controversy. Some people enjoy going to court. Some people even enjoy getting arrested and, you know, getting <laughs> locked in cells and stuff. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> the certain ways of doing things is going to be suitable for them. There's not suitable for, a, you know, for a guy with a career and a wife and the kids and responsibilities. Exactly. You know, they're going to conduct themselves in different ways. It's not appropriate for the other guy to, to do things that way. So... <laughs> So yeah, when we're so when we're doing just fine, like that's why I said Gordon resonated with me 
because of where I was at the moment or kind of where I still am and the way I looked at life and figured, started looking at things and say, you know, it, all this fighting and it just don't make any sense. And here he comes with agree with everybody. Mm. It's like, hmm, let's see what he's talking about. And he's getting success. I'll go here and see what's going on. Mm. And then you move on to other people. And, you know, once you figure out, I know we talked about all that already. So, you know, move on after you've learned enough, then you can move on to someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, you know, people, that don't, you know, it's kind of like it's drama. And people get, and it's the same programming, or here it is, you cannot solve a problem with the same knowledge it took to create it. You have to have more knowledge to solve a problem. So people are coming into this whole arena with the same programming that, oh, well, and they're looking at the drama and they're focusing on this and the right or wrong and this and that. And you got to reprogram all this stuff in here. It just You've been programmed for years. Mm. Your whole life you've been programmed. Your parents were programming you based on their program, and you grew up, started watching TV, you were being programmed, and school is based on a certain model if you actually look up the history of school, the education system, and then you, you, you go to school, and you got TV and movies that are programming you. Your whole life you've been programmed, and now you're coming into this body of knowledge with the same programming, hmm. and that's where people get mixed up, that shift, and it's like, and then you come over here, and some people come out in the same way, so... They understand why you're not getting remedy because you're thinking about things the way you were taught to think about things. And you actually never stopped and unprogrammed yourself and then reprogrammed yourself for your benefit, mm. not for their benefit. And mm. that's why people are having these issues and they're jumping bandwagons because you've been trained to do that. You don't want to believe it or not. You have just books out there that can prove everything you think is actually not your original thought. It's been planted there. Mm. And if you look at advertising, they can prove that very easily. I can do subliminal advertising, start planting thoughts in your mind that you don't know. So if you believe that you're not susceptible for that, I got another word. I got a um, sad story for you because you are. <laughs> so that same programming comes into play until you can unprogram yourself. So you can look at things clearly and understand what's going on. You're going to have a hard time. Mm-hmm. That's why people is, oh, this guy's right and wrong. And blah. Who do you know? You don't know anything. <laughs> How do you know this? You know enough to get some remedy. And maybe you can get it more consistently than other gurus, yes, but they're also getting remedy and they're doing something completely opposite of yours. So how do you explain that? Yeah. Until you can explain everybody's way and why it's working, why it isn't working, then you don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's bottom line. Just stick with your way and say it works and be happy that it works. Don't go attacking other people. Mm-hmm. And it kind of goes into, I don't know if you've read the, it was one quote in the four-hour work week that I really liked. He probably, I'm think, pretty sure he got it from somewhere else. But everything in excess becomes its opposite. So everyone's about freedom and being free, and then they become tyrants because you're tyrant to their way. It's my way. It's the only way. It's the only way to get out. Well, I thought you were about freedom. So it's too, we're going too far. We're hitting these extremes and turning into the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. So people are crazy. <laughs> yeah. People get, you get insane. It's, it's seeing the program, it's like, man, you guys are just programmed, and you can't even see it. <laughs> and you're coming in, it's just it's just madness. But anyway, back to trust. <laughs> so, um, okay, so people can come to your website. They can the, the Wednesday night calls are free, so they can log on to that and they can chat to you and stuff and ask questions and type of things. And then uh, if they want specific coaching and stuff, they can also come to you for that. Yeah, they can come for the coaching. They can call and, you know, pay by the minute or by the hour, whatever it is, and and so they don't waste my time. But Wednesdays are free, and you know, back of Gordon's Monday night calls, you can always catch me, and I'll sit there and talk to you for hours. And we'll go through a whole I think last week we went through like some of the whole process. But uh, you know, it takes more than uh, it, it was. Where I got an email the other day. This guy tried to negotiate with me, and it was cool that he tried to negotiate. So I appreciated that because it's one of the things we teach in our coaching is to understand negotiation because you're dealing with human beings. But is certain things like he's coming in with the old programming, his, his current level of knowledge, trying to figure out this new body of knowledge. So he said, um, how about we do a trial, a trial period where you teach me A for B and I go out and field test it, then we'll talk about paying you. <laughs> and I said, you got to be crazy because you, you can't teach A for B in like one session. You can, but it's so much information, I don't think you can just let it all, it takes time to sink in and people think, your brain works instantly. Sometimes your brain has to kind of work on things and then it clicks eventually. You know, when you have those epiphanies, that's everything, all the com- combination of everything finally lining up and bing, light goes off. Hmm. But how long did that take before it happened? Nothing is instant. Hmm. 
I tell you fact one, two, three, four, five, and then all